from the headquarters of Telesur English in Quito, Ecuador. This is from the south, and I'm Jose Daniel Lopez. March 5th marks the sixth year anniversary of the death of Commander Hugo Chavez, the leader of the Bolivarian Revolution. His legacy remains visible across all Latin America. Let's take a look at the life of a man who inspired millions. On February the 4th of 1992, Commander Hugo Chavez sealed a pact of love and loyalty with the Venezuelan people. A pact that has never been broken with full commitment and humility. He never betrayed his people nor let them down, and neither did his people. I have seen and I have felt that the love between us, the love for what is ours, the love of our people for the revolution has only grown. And many times I have said the words of José Martí, love is rewarded with love. With loyal people by his side, from the beginning, he became immortal in Venezuelan history. Thanks to his hard work as president, Venezuela is considered to be at the forefront of respecting the dignity and sovereignty of people, becoming an example for a huge number of nations. We have received the most tragic of news. At 4.25 p.m. on March 5th, our commander, Hugo Chavez Frias, has passed away. The tragic news of his death broke millions of hearts. Amidst the pain, Venezuelan people swore loyalty to the continuation of the revolution, awakening patriotism and dignity among them. The entire world expressed solidarity with the Venezuelan people, recognizing the magnitude of Commander Chavez's work, which was achieved out of love for his country and also for humanity. He accomplished Simon Bolivar's dream, of returning dignity to the invisible and to build a big, prosperous and sovereign country. I am no longer Chavez. Chavez is a people. Chavez are millions. You too are Chavez. Venezuelan women, you too are Chavez. Venezuelan youth, you too are Chavez. Venezuelan child, you too are Chavez. Venezuelan soldier, you too are Chavez. Commander Chavez left a legacy of unwavering fight for the Bolivarian Revolution, a fight that despite difficulties, people refused to give up. They refused to walk backwards on all that has been achieved during the revolutionary process. The Venezuelan city of Puerto Cabello has celebrated the traditional La Maca festivities. Hundreds of people joined the celebration, which starts with the depiction of a dead. A wake is held for the representation of a deceased person with dances and music throughout the night. After that, the deceased is wrapped in a hammock and symbolically buried during Carnival Tuesday or Mardi Gras. This is the 148th anniversary of the traditional celebration. At about five minutes to midnight, celebration number 148 of La Maca begins. It is a very old tradition, kind of a show, with dance and music. La Hamaca is a tradition in our neighborhood that has been celebrated for a long time. We represent the death of someone on Monday and the funeral on Tuesday. It is a very important celebration and all the community attends. On Venezuela, the people are free and have taken this opportunity to have fun. Kids get dressed up in their costumes and take part in the carnival celebrations, free from fear and the smiles on everyone's faces says it all. To share this festivity with my family is really important. It's good for the kids to go out and have fun in a different way. While most Venezuelans are out enjoying the festivities, others gather in Plaza Alfredo Sadel Square in the capital, Caracas, to welcome opposition lawmaker and self-proclaimed interim president Juan Guaidó. He returned to Venezuela freely and faced no charges, even though the mainstream media said he would be arrested. His supporters continue on the path of destabilization. Regarding the possibility of war, I think it won't come to that. The United States is not crazy. The U.S. knows what it's doing, as do the other countries that support them. 
The country is going through the most difficult stage in this period of its history. Despite the countries and politicians who support war in Venezuela to overthrow the legitimate government of President Nicolás Maduro, Venezuelans are raising their voices in favor of peace. I'm here to enjoy with my children. We Venezuelans want to live in peace for our children. Our children are the most important thing. Citizens are carrying on with their daily lives, despite the threat of war looming over them. Violent clashes have erupted in the party of Ferbo Ladud in Rio's Carnival. Clashes broke out following a fight after midday. Riot police fired tear gas to disperse the crowd. At least one person had been arrested. Singer Ludmilla stopped her show when the violence started and the street party was cut short. During Monday night's carnival parade in Rio de Janeiro, a samba school paid tribute to slain councilwoman and human rights activist Marielle Franco. Waving flags with Franco's face on them, the Mangueira Samba dance troupe marched through the San, Bod San Bodromo. Marielle Franco was a member of Rio's municipal chamber and as well as, an, as a well-known activist for women's LGBTQ and afro brazilian rights. He was shot dead last year along with her driver, Anderson Gomez. She was the only black counselor in Rio de Janeiro who carried in her body and in her story all the causes she defended. She was a black woman from the favelas, a lesbian who was executed. Almost a year after this political crime, Brazil is still unable to say who ordered Marielle's murder. This year, Mangueira pays tribute to democracy, to a country that we want to defend, a fair country, a country that does not accept Marielle's death, a country that only accepts its true history and meaning. But the tribute of Franco was not the only political statement of the night. Free Lula and attacks against President Jair Bolsonaro were heard throughout the festival. Carnival celebrations are taking place until the 9th of March. We elected a Nazi as a president. The people did not want him. I am sure that the great majority of people did not elect him. He is not my president and he does not represent me. He does not represent the majority of people who are here. That's why these people today are singing at the top of their lungs against the prejudice he creates. This is the part of the fight for what we are living today. Our correspondent in Sao Paulo, Brian Neal, tells us more about the political messages on display during this year's carnival. 2019 has proven to be one of the most politicized carnivals in Brazilian history. In street blocos across the country, from Fortaleza to Sao Paulo, Belo Horizonte, Rio de Janeiro, crowds of thousands are chanting insults against far-right President Jair Bolsonaro, who has seen his popularity slip to record low levels after a series of corruption scandals have rocked his family and his top cabinet ministers. In Rio de Janeiro, in the San Badromo Carnival Stadium, Legendary group Manguera opened its parade last night to a television audience of millions across the country with an homage to slain socialist city councilwoman Marielle Franco. And Paraíso do Tuiti, another huge samba organization, dedicated its entire one-hour parade to ex-president Lula, which it called the savior of the homeland. And in this parade there were different floats going by with signs mocking Jair Bolsonaro. One of them repeated his campaign slogan, saying, God above all, but I support torture. So as Bolsonaro's popularity continues to slide, the feeling on the streets is of growing resistance to his far-right government. With him, Brian, for that report, and Bolivians have celebrated the last day of carnival with traditional dances and parades, including the famed UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage Carnival in Oruro. The Bolivian carnival is all about greeting the Mother Earth, Pachamama, through local rituals called Chaya and La Nata Andina. More than 140 celebrations took place around the country to celebrate the four-day festival. The carnival in Trinidad and Tobago has come to an end with a spectacular parade. The street, the street came to life as people in colorful and wonderful costumes made their way through dancing on a glorious day. The two-day festival...
number of cultural events in celebration of the country's unique diversity. It is one of the most anticipated events in the calendar. In the German city of Munich, fruits and vegetable sellers are performing their annual carnival dance. They are dressed with customs representing their trade. Thousands of people participated in the festivity. Each year, vendors started preparing 10 new dances from October. The first dance took place in 1987. More news coming up. We'll be back in a minute. Welcome back. The Mexican government has apologized for the first time to the families of five young people kidnapped by police and later killed by drug traffickers. The police reportedly turned the four boys and a girl over a drug cartel that killed them. The event took place in 2016 in the state of Veracruz, one of the most violent in Mexico. Their families say the apology is the first official recognition that the youths were, not, were innocent and not criminals. Eight policemen have been arrested so far out of 21 suspects. It's an apology for when we tried to criminalize your children. Without any grounds, they were falsely accused. May this be clear. Bernardo, José, Susana, José Alfredo, and Mario Arturo were innocent and should have never experienced what they did. The Special Jurisdiction for Peace in Colombia has decided to open an investigation into the genocide committed against the left-wing Patriotic Union Party in the 1990s, a collection of crimes that left over 6,000 victims. Here's the story. 30 years ago, at El Dorado Airport in Bogotá, a young political leader from the left-wing Patriotic Union Party, José Antequera, was murdered. His son is now demanding for the investigations to be reopened in order to discover who ordered his father's murder. The prosecutor's office has not advanced the investigation to discover who murdered my father, and it's the same for the murder of so many others, which have even been declared as crimes against humanity. The prosecutor's office have repeated this news as an advancement in the justice system, but the reality is they are only media shows, and there has been no progress. Because of this, the Special Jurisdiction for Peace has opened case number 006, known as the victimations of members of the Patriotic Union by agents of the state. Since it was a standard and generalized practice in the country to eradicate the left wing party. This board considers that this case meets all the requirements to be prioritized according to the three reports received by the Special Jurisdiction for Peace. Members of the Patriotic Union were victims of systematic violence and received attacks against their lives, harming their physical, sexual, and psychological integrity. 20 members of the public forces and 13 former agents of the Administrative Department of Security, among others, are involved in the case. Brigadier General Uskategui and General Rito Alejo del Rio are two of those involved. Other names we will keep under wraps. Apart from military officers, paramilitary commanders and civilians are also believed to have participated in the crimes. Heber Velosa García, alias HH, Jesús Ignacio Roldán, alias Monoloche, Ramiro Banoy Murillo, alias Cuco Banoy, Raúl Emilio Hasbún, alio Pedro Bonito, Atanael Matajudíos, Adán Rojas Ospina, Salvatore Mancuso, Diego Fernando Murillo. Former director of the Administrative Department of Security, or DAS, retired General Miguel Massa Marquez, could also have been linked to the case. And our correspondent in Bogota, Manuel Jimenez, brings us up to date. The Special Jurisdiction for Peace has opened the case 006 about attacks of several state agents against members of the Patriotic Union Party. Two retired army generals have been linked to this case. The first one, Ritualejo del Rio, known as the peacemaker of Uraba, has been sentenced to 37 years for the murder of a social leader in the Department of Chocó in 1997. He has also been investigated for 103 massacres in the Uraba region between 1998 and 2002. The other retired general 
General Jaime Euskategui has been sentenced to 25 years in prison for the 1997 Mapiripan massacre, in which 200 campesinos lost their lives in the hands of paramilitary groups. Other witnesses have been called to testify in this case, such as paramilitary group officers from the 1980s and 90s. The former president of the Administrative Department of Security, retired General Miguel Massa Marquez, could also be linked to this case, in which more than 6,000 people, members of the Patriotic Union Party, were murdered between 1984 and 2002 by paramilitary groups, a political genocide and a crime against humanity denounced in several international courts. We thank Manuel for that report. Dozens of armed men in Brazil enter protected indigenous land in the Amazon just 10 days after President Jair Bolsonaro took office. The indigenous community confronted the men armed with machetes, chainsaws and firearms. The villagers say the invaders threatened to set fire to their villages to drive them out. This clash is part of a surge of threats and illegal incursions that indigenous rights groups have reported after Bolsonaro's rise to power. We are afraid because we can't walk in our reserve anymore without worrying because what if we find some of them inside they start shooting at us, understand? This is a fear that we are dealing with here because we no longer have privacy. Guyana is set to implement a ban on single-use plastics by 2021. The government has already begun sensitizing the population. Several Caribbean countries have already implemented bans on single-use plastics. An estimated 8 million metric tons of plastic waste enter the world's ocean annually. Everywhere in the world. It also provides a good opportunity to raise awareness about the vast diversity of marine life globally, its crucial importance to human development, and the importance of prudent management of marine resources for future generations. A cozy little spot on the island of Antigua and Barbuda has been voted best attraction in the entire Caribbean. Nelson's Dockyard, which was also selected as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2016, was given the tag by the Readers of USA Today. It topped the category for the annual Readers Choice Awards. Archaeologists have discovered a cave of hundreds of relics beneath the ruins of the Mayan city of Chichen Itza in Mexico. One of the lead scientists said it was incredible and will help researchers to better understand the origins and beliefs of the Chichen Itza residents. Chichen Itza is, this, is a stone city in the Yucatan Peninsula, founded around 750 after Christ. We'll be back in a minute. Stay with us. Welcome back. Protests continue in Algeria as thousands are calling for President Abdelaziz Bouteflika to back down from running for re-election. Thousands of mostly young Algerians are calling for a new generation of leaders, chanting, hey Bouteflika, there won't be a fifth term. However, in a letter read on the state television on Sunday, the president vowed to quit early if re-elected. The government of Burundi has forced the United, Nations to, the United Nations to shutter its local human rights office after 23 years in operation. In 2016, Burundi ceased all collaborations with the office, following a report that implicated authorities and their supporters in crimes against humanity. We have very credible reports of human rights violations and abuses, including killings, forced disappearances, ill treatment, arbitrary arrests and detentions, threats and restrictions on the freedom of association, expression, and movement. Um, these are ongoing allegations that we are receiving. Um, we also have figures which, again, we don't have updated figures, but I can share them with you anyway. Um, from November 2016 until September 2018, our office received at least 
11,050, so that's 11,050, allegations of arbitrary arrests and detentions in Burundi. The son of former Liberian president has been charged over the disappearance of recently printed banknotes. Charles Sir Leaf was charged together with two former senior figures at the country's central bank. Their charges include economic sabotage, misuse of public funds, illegal disbursement and expenditure, criminal conspiracy and facilitation. Internally displaced Cameroonians continue to arrive to the, speaking, to the French speaking department of Mongo. They are fleeing the, the conflict in the English speaking regions of the country. In the small city of Kong Samba, about 100 families have taken refuge. Since 2017, English speaking separatists have taken up arms against the French speaking government on the western flank of Cameroon. Okay. Thousands of opposition supporters have hit the streets of Albania's capital, Tirana, calling for Prime Minister Ed Rama to step down. They are accusing Rama's government of corruption and links to organized crime. Demonstrators were seen throwing firecrackers on security forces deployed around parliament. Protests have been ongoing in Tirana. At least 23 people died and 50 were left injured in a series of devastating tornadoes in the U.S. on Sunday. The number of fatalities is expected to rise. One Alabama resident, Angela Locascio, recalls how her house and several others were destroyed, while over 6,000 homes were left without power. The last tornado with such an impact was in Moore, Oklahoma, that killed 24 people in May 2013. Um, well, my husband, he was watching the weather, and we didn't expect it to get very this bad. And when he saw it on the news that it was going to come right for us, he was like, we got to go. So we scooped up our dogs and we left. And then about an hour later, we went back, and it was just total devastation. Like, the, everything was destroyed. Every tree was down. And now we bring you more news from around the world. After spending nearly six years in prison, Egyptian photojournalist Mahmoud Abu Zaid has vowed to resume his work. Nonetheless, he has been under supervision and is required to spend every night at his local police station. He was arrested while covering a bloody government crackdown on protests. It's an unforgettable experience. Yes, it was extremely hard, but it was also a learning experience for me to see life from a different angle a new angle that you can find outside prison. It was strongly difficult, but I learned it a lot. Women in Myanmar have taken the stage to break taboos about sex. Actresses gather to put on their own version of the vagina monologues. The women believe that through this, young generations can begin to appreciate their bodies. The front man for British electronic band The Prodigy was found dead in his home on Monday in what has been confirmed to be a suicide. Bandmates of Keith Flint released a statement on social media expressing shock and sadness at the death of the 49-year-old. Known as a unique and charismatic performer, Flint was instrumental in creating a new sound for British music. The president of the Philippines, Rodrigo Duterte, says he wants the name of his country to be changed. Duterte says he wants to delete the col colonial origin of the name. The Philippines were named this way in 1543 to tribute the back then Spanish prince and afterwards King Philip II. One of the names that could replace Philippines could be Maharlika, which is a feudal warrior class in the ancient Filipino society. And with this, we come to the end of this news brief. You can find this and many other stories on our website at tellsourenglish.net. And don't forget to follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Tellsour English, I'm Jose Daniel Lopez. Thank you for watching.